What's going on, y'all? This is Czar. So last week I did a video uh, showing how my Studio One 2.5 for 2.5 months went, and this week I want to follow up with a video of showing a workaround for something I do all the time in Pro Tools. Uh, so you show you some things that I learned uh, while using Studio One that I didn't know it had, and show you some things that I knew it had but didn't realize how big of a deal it was until I really got to using it. So let's start with the workaround. So in Pro Tools, if I have a, a session that has the lead vocal on more than one track, uh, I like to send it all to a bus track, a mono bus track, and insert some analog gear. Well, in Studio One, you can't set up a mono aux track. Uh, all the aux tracks are stereo. So the workaround for that, let's create a bus here. The workaround is if you take the binaural pan and insert that, you've got a mono button. So if you select that, even though the track is still stereo, it will be in mono because of this plug-in. Just you'd want to put this plug-in uh, first, and it'll make everything after it mono. And two features here up here in options you've got return to start on stop and the cursor follows edit selection now I knew the return to start on stop was here and what that does if I hit play with it out if I hit play and I stop it and I hit play again it picks up where it left off um, in Pro Tools, I'm used to working with that on, so wherever I start from, it jumps back to where I started. Uh, very handy. The one I didn't know, the cursor follows edit position. So for a long time using Studio One, I would have to click up in the timeline to move around, uh, which was really annoying. With the cursor edit follows position, if I select a range here, the cursor jumps to the beginning of that range so that's really helpful for moving around and another thing I found really useful is the Marcos here um, I knew the Marcos were added and I never really messed with them uh, I got to messing with them and found a few really helpful with the markers and create song markers I use that all the time uh, when I set up a session to mix, I take my markers and I mark the parts of the song. Now, the other one is the zoom overview. So I've only got four tracks here. Let's uh, add some more tracks. So you can see what the zoom overview does is it'll give you a whole view of your session. Okay. And then let's just take everything, duplicate it out. So as you can see, I can't see everything in this session right now, but the zoom overview allows me to see the whole session. It's the same thing that uh, in Pro Tools, the control, option, command, and the down key would do this. Another feature is uh, in Studio One, I'm able to run my buffer at 128. Uh, the buffer size, this is in, important for two reasons. Uh, typically, the rule uh, with the buffer is you want to record with a lower buffer uh, because it reduces latency. And you want to mix with a higher buffer because with a higher buffer, it frees up more computer power. So, but with with Studio One, with me being able to run my buffer at 128, uh, my plugins can work more more in real time uh, with the events. And I'll show you an example of that. Now in Pro Tools, I have to run my buffer at 1024. Uh, if I do anything lower than that, I would I would get pop-up errors telling me to increase my buffer size. So let's take let's get rid of these tracks here. For example, let's 
let's take the if I hit a limiter on a track here well, let's add one so with the limiter I'm gonna set it real quick here That'll work. So looking at the gain reduction, watch how watch how the snare hit affects the limiter. So you can you can see that the snare hit and the gain reduction is happening um, pretty much in real time. It's not exactly real time, but if we adjust the buffer say to 2048 here now watch how the gain reduction uh, reacts to the snare is completely off so I really love that I can run my buffer at 128 and like I said, it, it allows my plugins to work more in real time. So when I'm watching gain reduction for a compressor, it's reacting more in real time to to what it's to what it's compressing, uh, which is really helpful. Now, another thing is the trash can, which is down here. So as engineers, we're always second guessing ourselves this trash can feature I didn't know was here and what it does let's say this limiter I had this limiter on the track and I said you know what I don't like how that sounds so I'm gonna remove it and then let's say later on in the mix I said you know what I'm tripping that limiter sounded good I want to get it back jump in the trash here there's a limiter right click restore and it's right back with the same settings that I had before. Another thing is the mixer metering. So normally, this is the default that I mix with with my mixer. I've noticed that adjusting this, now I have more of a representation of where my signal is. So I can see, for example, the drums here. Is Speaking around negative six dB on the meters, and also hovering over the track or hovering over the meter will tell you where it's peaking at. And also, if you right-click, you've got options for the VU hold and the hold length. So those are things I never really knew Studio One could do until I, I say, got to fooling around with it more and using it over these. Uh, past two and a half months. Uh, I've also noticed that the record and monitor, um, when you record input where the meter is on that and then when you record it and play it back the meter is lower. Uh, so it looks like those are calibrated differently. I'd have to look into that. But that is something I, I noticed when I uh, had a recording session in Studio One that I did uh, last week. Now the final thing which may seem uh which may seem minor but i really love this feature and i didn't realize how much i loved it until i really started using this more let's say i want to export this selection here so let's let's export it actually let's yeah between the loop okay when you export anything in studio 1 it pops up in the finder right here so what's really great about that is I mean nine times out of ten or probably ten times out of ten when I'm exporting something I'm exporting it to email it uh, send a mix to a client or whatever um, with it popping up in the finder like that I can easily get it into an email get it attached and get it sent off rather than digging through my drive to find the file again and then attach it to the email so there you go there's um 
like I said, a few things that I've learned from from using Studio One exclusively over the last two and a half months. Uh, I've uploaded a couple Marcos that I created to the Presonics Exchange, and uh, once I get an email letting me know that those have been approved and available, I'm going to do a video showing you uh, two of the Marcos that I made and how I use them and how I think they'll be helpful. All right, I'll catch y'all next time.